Okay, so we are now in the adding buttons phase. Now how I like to add buttons is I like to turn on the initial position so I can see how teeth were originally positioned because this gives me an idea of where we're trying to go. So this video is not going to talk completely about all the different types of buttons and well, as far as when to use what. I don't have enough time for that in this one quick video, but I will show you the uh, workflow. I'm just going to right click on this tooth. So let's just look. These two lateral incisors are rotating quite a bit. In this case, that's pretty much the only teeth I would add buttons on. Okay, so I'm going to right click. You can hide this if you want. Um, I'll go ahead and hide it. And I'm going to click on here, say add button. We have these standard buttons, this tiny little button uh, rectangle. We have this larger rectangle and then this triangle. We also have elastic type buttons that you can attach elastics to. And then we also have the, this is a cone and a uh, ellipse and then um, uh, a wedge. My go-to is the standard rectangle. I usually set it to large. You can set them small, medium, or large. You can scale it later, but for now, I just always pick large. And now we have the ability to scale it taller and fatter and uh, thicker. So I tend to make them a little bit thicker, a little tall, and I keep them pretty well centered in the middle, you know, in the middle of the tooth and I usually push them into the model a little bit. Okay, so one thing I will share is that, well, and I, I mean, I have time to, is that I'm trying to rotate this tooth clockwise, so I will rotate the button a little bit counterclockwise. Now that's a philosophy type of thing, meaning I like to have the this edge be almost, not quite 90 degrees, not even close, but a more blunt edge for the, the retainer, the aligner to grab onto to push, but um, that's, you know, some people like to do the exact opposite for a more passive movement, but anyway, um, so again, that, I'll leave that up to you to decide what you think is the most uh, effective. But I've got this button positioned. You can see how it sticks off the tooth. If I want, I can just right click, do the same thing. I can, if I right click and say add button, add the same previous button, I can hide them. Or I can right click on this one and say duplicate. And now it's the exact same size as far as all the scaling I did, you know, made it a little bit longer, thicker, whatnot. Rotate that a little bit, push it in a little, rotate it even a little more, and there we go. So that's the way, that's how I would position these buttons, and I'm good to go. On the mandible, I don't necessarily need to go through this whole thing just from since this is just a demonstration video, but um, yeah, I mean, there's mainly just pushing these tipping these teeth outward. Uh, there's a rotation here and a rotation in this canine, so I would probably put buttons on those. Um, there's a little bit of intrusion of this tooth, but since there's going to be a button on this one, I probably wouldn't worry too much. So I'll just go ahead and add this. I'm going to leave it medium because it's a lateral and lower incisor and they're pretty small. And I'm rotating it um, clockwise as well, so I'm going to or I sorry, I'm, I'm rotating it, uh, the, the tooth mesially, so I'm going to rotate the button distally and push it into the tooth a little bit. Make sure it's deep enough that your opposing teeth aren't going to collide with it when they're closing. And then this one, right click, add previous button. I'll just go ahead and scale it up a bit. Push it in. This time we are, once again, rotating to the mesial, so I'm going to rotate the button to the distal. So I have a little stronger lever arm, and there we go. Hide the initial, and this is what those are going to look like. So that's it. That is the adding buttons phase of this uh, module. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press forward to continue to prepare the aligners. Oh, that's because I checked that box to design the aligners on inadvertently. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to backtrack on my own and then come back, and then we'll just continue on in the next phase. All right, so I went ahead and fixed it. You can see that it now says continue to export instead. Again, we don't need to make the aligners.